SpaceX has done something no one thought possible. They turned rocket explosions into a business model. Every test flight of Starship brings breathtaking engineering leaps, and yes, equally breathtaking failures. But after five flights, NASA scientists are raising a new kind of alarm, one that goes far deeper than why did that rocket blow up? Because Starship isn't just SpaceX's dream anymore. It's the official spacecraft NASA depends on to land humans on the moon for the first time since Apollo. Billions of dollars, the entire Artemis program, America's return to the lunar surface, all of it hinges on Starship overcoming a problem that is far more complex and far more dangerous than most people realize. Today we're going inside the real engineering nightmare that NASA is worried about. Why Starship Heat Shield may be the most challenging technology SpaceX has ever attempted, and what it means for the future of the Moon, Mars, and humanity's place in space. Let's quickly set the record straight. Starship has only flown a handful of full scale integrated test missions so far. Flight 1 in April 2023 lost control, failed to separate, and had to be terminated. Flight 2 was a major improvement but still saw a booster explosion and upper stage failure. Flight 3 reached near orbital velocity, but lost the ship during re-entry. Flight 4 performed the first fully controlled re-entry and nearly guided itself to a splashdown. And Flight 5 completed an even cleaner re-entry with a controlled descent before being destroyed near the landing burn. These were historic milestones, but they also revealed something crucial. Starship can get to space. SpaceX can control it in space. SpaceX can almost bring it back intact, but almost isn't enough. Not for NASA, not for the Moon, and definitely not for Mars. This is where NASA scientists have stepped in with a brutally honest assessment. Starship's biggest enemy isn't thrust or plumbing or flight guidance. Its biggest enemy is heat. Because getting to space is easy, coming back from it safely, with a reusable spacecraft the size of a building is a different challenge entirely. And to understand why, we need to go back to the most important warning sign in modern spaceflight history, the tragedy of Space Shuttle Columbia. The Space Shuttle was one of the greatest engineering achievements ever built, but it carried a fatal weakness, its thermal protection system. Columbia's tiles were fragile, custom-shaped, and absolutely critical. During its final launch in 2003, a piece of foam insulation struck the wing at high speed. The impact punched a hole in the reinforced carbon panel near the leading edge. On re-entry, superheated plasma, thousands of degrees hot, rushed into the wing structure. Columbia disintegrated. Seven astronauts were lost. Why does this matter? Because Starship is attempting the same thermal protection concept but on a far larger, more extreme scale. Where the shuttle used around 24,000 tiles, Starship uses roughly 18,000 hexagonal ceramic tiles. They are smaller, simpler, standardized, and much easier to mass produce, but the physics have not changed. These tiles must stay attached through violent vibrations. They must resist cracking. They must survive extreme thermal cycling. They must handle contraction of cryogenic tanks when they shrink in the cold and expansion during re-entry heating. They must handle structural flex and they must prevent even one point of failure. Columbia showed us what happens when one tile breaks loose. Starship cannot afford a similar vulnerability. And to make this harder, Starship experiences far more extreme heating than the shuttle ever did because of its belly flop re-entry maneuver. But if heat wasn't already enough of a problem, Starship's design introduces another brutal challenge, mass. The shuttle used aluminum lithium alloys, reinforced carbon-carbon and lightweight composites. Every kilogram mattered. SpaceX went a completely different direction. Starship is made almost entirely from stainless steel. People joke that Starship is a giant stainless steel thermos, but this material choice was intentional. Steel is cheap, it's easy to weld, it maintains strength at high temperatures, it survives cryogenic conditions without shattering, and most importantly, 
it allows SpaceX to build fast. But NASA scientists point out that steel buys manufacturability and you pay the cost in mass. That mass isn't a small issue, it is the central engineering constraint. The upper stage of Starship has a dry mass over 20 times that of the Falcon 9 second stage. Yes, it has six Raptor engines producing enormous thrust, but thrust doesn't scale equally with mass. This leads to a painful conclusion. Starship can only afford to be this heavy because SpaceX intends to refuel it in orbit. And that brings us to one of the most underestimated bottlenecks in the entire program, orbital refueling. For Edemus 3, Starship has one job, take astronauts from lunar orbit to the moon's surface and back. But Starship cannot launch with enough fuel to do that on its own. It must be refueled in orbit. And not just once or twice, NASA estimates between 8 and 16 refueling missions, depending on mission mass. No spacecraft in history has ever transferred cryogenic propellant in orbit at this scale. NASA knows this, and that's why they're worried. Because if Starship arrives in orbit heavier than planned, or if its heat shield requires additional mass, then it carries less fuel. Less fuel means more refueling missions. More refueling missions means more launches. More launches means more risk, more cost, and more delay. Artemis is not waiting forever. NASA needs timelines, not ambition. This is why NASA has become intensely focused on Starship's re-entry reliability. If Starship can't safely return repeatedly, reflying, relanding, and demonstrating fast reuse, the entire refueling-based architecture collapses. But even this isn't the scariest part. The scariest part begins when we stop talking about Earth and start talking about Mars. One of the most misunderstood facts in spaceflight is this. Mars is not easier than Earth for re-entry. It's actually more dangerous. At first glance, that seems wrong. Mars has a thin atmosphere, only 1% as dense as Earth's. Less air should mean less heat, right? Not quite. Mars's atmosphere is almost entirely carbon dioxide. At high temperatures during re-entry, carbon dioxide breaks apart into carbon monoxide and free oxygen. That free oxygen becomes part of the plasma stream surrounding the spacecraft. This is extremely reactive oxygen, far more aggressive than what a vehicle sees in Earth's atmosphere. NASA engineers have studied this chemistry, and the conclusions are brutal. Mars re-entry can expose heat shields to two to three times more reactive oxygen than Earth re-entry. This doesn't just heat the tiles, it chemically attacks them. It's oxidation at extreme temperatures, the plasma equivalent of corrosion. A normal ceramic tile can withstand heat, but sustained oxygen bombardment is a completely different challenge. The space shuttle never faced this. Mars landers never faced this because they used a blade of heat shields that burn away by design. But Starship is trying to do something no spacecraft has ever done. Enter Mars, land, take off again, return to Earth, and do all of that without replacing the heat shield. NASA scientists worry that even if Starship masters Earth re-entry, Mars re-entry may be an order of magnitude harder. This is why SpaceX has experimented with concepts like transpiration cooling, allowing the metal skin to sweat methane and create a protective gas layer. But such systems are heavy, complex, and nowhere near flight ready. Until Starship solves Earth re-entry reliably, Mars remains a distant goal. Now we arrive at the political core of the story. Starship is no longer just SpaceX's project, it is NASA's official human landing system for the Artemis program. NASA has awarded SpaceX more than $4 billion in contracts. Starship is slated to land astronauts on Artemis 3 and Artemis 4. NASA selected Starship because its payload capacity is unmatched, its crew volume is enormous, its cost per launch could be incredibly low, and it aligns with long-term Mars goals. But NASA has a clear and non-negotiable requirement. Starship must demonstrate safe, repeatable Earth re-entry before it can carry astronauts. 
NASA cannot put human lives on a spacecraft that has not landed safely, cannot return intact, or has not proven its heat shield durability. If Starship can't solve re-entry, and solve it soon, Artemis III will slip, not because NASA wants delays, but because physics leaves no choice. The stakes are enormous. The U.S. race to return to the moon, international credibility, billions in contracts, congressional pressure, and global competition. Because Starship is not alone in the race, Blue Origin is building New Glenn and the Blue Moon Lander. Their approach is simpler. Their lander doesn't need to survive Earth re-entry, doesn't require 16 refueling flights, and isn't fully reusable. Meanwhile, China is developing its own lunar architecture using the Long March 10 rocket and a two-stage lunar lander. Their design resembles Apollo, simple, direct, and requiring no orbital refueling. Unlike NASA, China doesn't rely on commercial partners and can rapidly allocate national resources. If Starship stumbles, China could beat the United States back to the moon. NASA officials have openly acknowledged this possibility. That's why this re-entry problem isn't just an engineering challenge, it's a geopolitical one. All of this brings us to the final truth. The failures we've seen aren't evidence that Starship won't work. They're evidence that SpaceX is pushing the boundaries of physics. Starship must survive Earth re-entry, survive Mars re-entry, be reused rapidly, perform multiple orbital dockings, refuel in space, land on the moon, land on Mars, lift off from Mars, return to Earth, and do all of this at a cost that beats every other rocket in the world. Nothing like this has ever been built. Nothing like this has ever even been attempted. NASA isn't worried because Starship is failing. NASA is worried because Starship is aiming at the hardest target in human engineering, and the entire future of human spaceflight depends on whether it succeeds. Every Starship that explodes teaches SpaceX something new. Every flight that lasts a few seconds longer adds data. Every tile that breaks reveals a weakness that can be fixed. This is how SpaceX works. Falcon 1 failed until it didn't. Falcon 9 boosters crashed until they didn't. And Starship will keep flying and breaking until it gets re-entry right. Because the moment Starship survives a full re-entry and lands safely, humanity enters a new era, a moon era, a Mars era, a multi-planet era. And that future depends on solving one brutal, unforgiving challenge. Heat. The moment Starship defeats that one enemy, everything else becomes possible.